Today on the podcast, we recap Born Free, the Ride One Cana Day Showdown, to the Oregon Run, 4th of July, and why you need to tie down your typewriter tightly. All today on the American Road Runner Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the American Roadrunner Podcast. Yeah, I'm glad y'all could join us here today on this, the American Roadrunner Podcast. Whether you're a casual rider, a dirt track racer, or a motorcycle endurance enthusiast, a newbie, novice, or expert, a meticulous wrencher, one-wheel wonder, daredevil, or a polished chrome custom collector, this is the show for you. Yep, here we share stories from the road on our two-wheeled motorcycle machines. All tales of spills, thrills, and chills. All the good, the bad, and ugly. The stories of freedom of the open road. I'm your host, Bob Marshall. And I'm your other host, Brian Phillipson. Today we're pretty excited. Got a good show for you. Yeah, what is the show about today? It's about the last few weeks of life. It's been rather exciting. Yeah, you know, we haven't done a podcast in a couple weeks, and that's because Bob has been on the road. About how many miles altogether do you think you've done in the past two weeks? Uh, So I figured it out. I was technically gone just over eight days. And yeah, it was just under 4,000 miles. I don't really have a speedometer, but I remember Curtis and I were up in hood river oregon trying to figure it out yeah well first let's talk about what we talked about on the last podcast when uh when uh jeremiah was here Mm. born free born free well i'll tell you what born free this year was really freaking happening i'm sure a lot of people who are listening have heard other breakdowns on it or seen other social media on it but i just could not imagine born free being any better and we were fortunate enough as american roadrunner to sneak in with our good friends Alan and his company, Coke and Clinkers. Uh, Alan owns a motorcycle shop here in town called Makerspace. And boy, it was great to just kind of sneak in with their booth. And uh, Saturday, uh, we were there uh, hanging out, rode out, had a good ride out. It's only, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 miles, I reckon, from Riverside up to the Irvine Canyon there. And, uh, Got to meet a lot of people. I got to chat with a lot of people who uh, enjoyed reading and writing and writing. So Mm -hmm. there was, uh, man, it was really exciting. Yeah. You meet any podcast listeners? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was great. We had some cool little flyers that we were handing out. Everybody really seems to be excited about the podcast and format. I enjoy it because it's radio without all the commercials. So it's kind of a win-win. <laughs> I enjoy it because it's something to do on Monday and Wednesday nights. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's usually when we record, right? Yeah. Mondays and Wednesday nights. Yeah. But uh, it was it was a good time. Uh, let me think. Saturday night, we did have some excitement coming back. Uh, I think we came back about 6 or 7, and we were hauling butt on the 91 like we do and the 91 came, would come to a stop and then start going again then come to a stop and start going again and at this point it was just uh, myself annette and jer cruising down the highway and at some point uh we all stopped and annette was behind us and i remember jer locked up and i locked up and at this point i think we we're in the slow lane we we're on the 91 freeway just west of pierce street exit um and uh boy and that's front end locked up and it was just like that scene in the blues brothers where i'm going and i look in my rearview mirror and i see a neck get wonky and then i look to the left of me because i'm on respecting the right side of the lane and her bike just goes flying by me without her on it <laughs> so needless to say unfortunately the front end locked up and uh threw her off the bike Damn. so yeah so of course i went to the right a bit i remember i kind of parked in the middle lane and i did my very best to park my bike completely sideways Uh, and I looked over my shoulder and people were starting to stop a bit but I jumped off my bike really freaking quick and uh, started running back and I I had to stop traffic on the 91 because the net was laid out Uh, anyways uh, that that was harder than it sounds trying to stop traffic on a freeway like the 91 yeah Southern California drivers they they don't take shit well and they all wanted to kind of go around and 
you know, once I started screaming and flailing my hands, I think they all took me pretty darn seriously, and they all stopped. And yeah, and you can't miss the motorcycle in the middle of the road. I mean, this is a beautiful orange motorcycle, right? And it's laying just on one side. It's got those big engine guards, so mm-hmm. it didn't fall over or anything. It literally just kind of stopped at a forty-five degree angle to upright. Um, so it was sitting there, and I, I thought for sure it'd go creaming off to the left, but it really just kind of stayed in its lane and. When it passed me, it was sparking all sorts of colors. Um, there ended up being not very much damage done to the bike, believe it or not. Oh. Um, and luckily, there wasn't much damage done to Annette. Uh, I think she had just, uh, you know, scared herself a bit. And uh, she sold. She didn't knock herself out. But I, I got to her and looked over her, and um, everything seemed to be working. First, she asked, well, how's my back? I'm like, well, your back's just <laughs> fine. Like, let's worry about you. Uh, she did uh, scrape her arm. Uh, she decided it was uh, too warm to wear anything on her arm, so she got a nice scrape on her left uh, forearm. Uh, but, you know, she jumped right up, and her knee was a bit bruised up as well because, again, she fell off the left side of the back, so it was her left arm and her left knee. Um, she was ready to go. Uh, we picked up the back. And at some point, and, you know, Jer was running back. Jer was kind of helping out and staying a few feet away and making sure everybody was stopped. And at some point, he pulled out his camera and started videoing everything. (laughs) So if you look on uh, Annette's Instagram under Threaten, she's been a guest on our show a few times. You can see this video of me, you know, putting her back on her back and traffic stopped. And 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 she was able to ride away, huh? Well, that's I said, well, do you want to pull off the highway? Do you want us to just pulled to the side and she goes no i want a margarita you know let's go (laughs) and her uh, her left arm was bleeding profusely so i took out some of my balm and just slapped it on her arm and off we went downtown to to doña timos for some freaking mexican food and a margarita (laughs) some balm fixed it all i thought you were going to say hockey tape because that seems to be your fix all wrap it all up with (laughs) hockey stick tape you know and it just goes to show you and the back did real well it didn't really suffer any damage it just grabbed on that uh, engine guard uh, and the pop and her bag her her left bag did flop open and the top did fall over on the ground and get some scrapes on it but so you recommend engine guards in some cases man especially on those those big harleys i mean that thing was just it, it was awesome how it didn't fall over or let alone hit me i mean it was just a few feet from me when i saw it flying by me without her on it hmm. um yeah, it it could have been a lot worse. It was definitely scary, but you know, it it's all part of it. We we got through it and she uh got up and got going and uh she's uh been healing the wound on her arm and it's got her leg wrapped up. Actually, she ended up barring the brace from Connie. Connie had knee <laughs> surgery uh a few months ago and so and she, Connie's our friend from a uh, girl on a moto. Girl on a moto. Yeah. yeah, so she borrowed her brace for a while and uh Within a week, she was riding up to uh, Utah for the uh, Blacktop Ramble. So, uh, yeah, Annette's a trooper. She just kind of kept going with it. Uh, So that was Saturday. So that was a fun Saturday. Um, Sunday was pretty relaxed compared to that. Jer and I just cruised out there. Uh, I know Saturday night, too, Jer and I put a new tire on my KZ-1000, a new rear tire, which really has to be done again. Uh, You know, those rear tires on those chops only do four or 5,000 miles. Uh, sometimes you can get six out of them, but this tire, I, I only have about a thousand miles left and we got some exciting things coming up this summer. So I got to put several more thousand miles on it. So I'm going to have to replace that tire again, even though that tire is only two weeks old. Hmm. Uh, so we did that Saturday night threw that new tire on, which was really a pain in the butt. But, um, at one point when the tire finally did pop, I had a bunch of soap. If you've ever done a tire, it's nice to line it with soap and, uh, I'm sitting there and it's waist height. I've got this really great work stand that I can work on tires and such with. Uh, and boy, it popped and it blew soap all over me <laughs> and I couldn't see. And it just filled my eye. And even though I had my safety glasses on or my, my, you know, my large reading specs that I have on right now. <laughs> uh, if any of you seen me lately, I get to use reading. I use bifocal safety glasses. Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I was, all over you, huh? I was covered in soap and I just... Hashtag so, biker bukkake. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> it was not. I had to follow Jer into the house and <laughs> douche my eyes out for minutes, you know, just to get everything out. And 
And it, that was a great part. As soon as it popped, Jared just started laughing because he had <laughs> he had suspected it was going to pop, so he had stepped three or four feet back, and I'm sitting there holding and beating on the tire, trying to get it to trying to get that bead to pop and seal. And anyways, just goes to show you. Uh, yeah, Sunday was pretty mellow, but you know, I, I sold a few books and met a few good people, and it was nice to sign a few books. Some people had brought their books uh, for signatures, which was great. It's always great to to sign my own book for people. Um, you know, and there were a lot of friends there. Uh, the Dutchman was there. The uh, Flying he, Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman, our yeah. good friend and sponsor, Jake. Uh, he was there hanging out with his bike. Uh, our friends over at, uh, yeah, our friends over at uh, Speed King Cycles, you know, they had a booth. They were right behind us. Uh, also, our friends, uh, Reed, with Max Speed Cycles here in town. He's a, young up and coming back builder boy he took second place in his back build there uh at born free it was it was terribly exciting it was just a great charge of energy in the air and everyone had a really good show so i was i was pretty happy i know the day before too we had taken a good ride from we had hit the stampede race that was going on that day before and then the next day i think yeah dan was out in paris but he had he was going to race Paris Friday night. He had raced Thursday night. And this is Danger Dan, our, our pod, fellow podcasting friend. Danger Dan. Yeah. he. Uh, so he, he just kind of jumped on his chop. He had gotten someone to bring his bike out from Texas, and he rode his chop out that he had uh, put a new engine in. And anyways, we had a really great ride over the Ortegas over to uh, Cook's Corner Friday night before born free and that was that, that was really cool what's cook's corner oh cook's corner is this great bar uh just a few miles away from born free okay up on on the highway there uh but boy we took the long way through lake elsinore up over ortega and then uh north up through well i guess it'd be the uh you know the east side of orange county really i hear uh, the ortega highway is kind of a dangerous spot for oh for it's even more dangerous with myself Jer, <laughs> danger yeah. dan and Danger Dan's brakes weren't working. He only put has out an brakes. all points bulletin. Beware! Mm. The road runners are uh, are coming over the Ortegas. Everybody, well, look out. and and it was great. There was this guy. His name was Dan. Uh, he's part of the. I think they were called Dyna Trash. They got a Facebook page. <laughs> anyway, so Dyna Trash Dan was kind of leading us. So that that was great. And I know a few times he'd just take off, and Jerry and I would be like, "Oh yeah, no way," and we just thunder past him you know <laughs> uh it, it was a lot of good fun but um not to ride with with good friends even if it's just for you know an hour and a half or whatever that ride was uh yeah so born free is definitely good fun but at the end of it all i just had uh, a few days to kind of get ready for the race what uh, race was that the next that would be the uh, ride one candidate challenge oh that, that's uh, right yes it's- traveling chopper charlie yeah yeah him and i raced uh the ride one can a day personal challenge that uh mr curtis morgan puts on for us but we happened to do it against each other starting from different points and ending at the same point so the answer was i uh was actually running a bit behind i had to leave at 3 a.m i was running a bit behind i thought for sure i could make it to i was leaving from azusa so I had to travel those 40, 50 miles up to Azusa uh, just to make it. So we were both doing about 1,000 miles. So I'm hauling butt to Azusa, and one of my bags tries to fall off the back. So I had to pull <laughs> over to the freeway, spend about, you know, five minutes wrenching it down. And uh, What was in the bag? Well, yeah, it was my typewriter and laptop bag, of course. <laughs> what are you doing with Every, a typewriter on a motorcycle, everybody, Bob? Everybody travels with a typewriter on a rigid, especially. I mean, uh-huh. especially when you're racing them. That's what I people do, right? I didn't know that was one of the things you got to have on a motorcycle. Well, maybe some people just aren't as cool as me. Maybe some people just have a pad and pencil. Yeah, that probably would have worked. Yeah. No ticket. I think Tracy's going to piss herself. I don't know what she's <laughs> laughing so hard about. She's like holding her nose dearly. <laughs> Yes, I took a darn typewriter. It was a small travel size one. It's Smith Corona. Uh, not the Sky Raptor. The, oh, yeah, the Sky Raptor. Uh, you know, early 50s model. Anyways, it only weighs like seven pounds. So. And what did you tell me yesterday? You were like, thank goodness it landed on my laptop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, well that, that was the other time in Oregon. 
We, we, yeah, we, we, we should oh, come back to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. So it happened twice. Well, it, yeah, the first time it didn't drag on the ground. Uh, it just, it just, it was sitting on top of the bag. And, you know, the answer is always the same. You bring bungee cords and nets thinking it's all going to hold itself just fine. And then a bungee cord's a little weaker than you think it is or older than you think it is. Some it of my bungee rattles cords, free and stuff, it right? just moves, especially on a rigid, everything's jumping around. So I always carry extra rope with me. So I had to pull off all the bungees and just kind of rope everything down hmm. and just pretend I was an old sailor and just, you know, just wrench it all down with good knots. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I know a lot of good knots. I used to have an ocean boat, so I kind of, you know, picked it up and kept running with it. So I wrenched it all down and I ended up getting to Azusa a good 10 minutes late, uh, maybe 15 minutes late. I don't know. I just turned on the Instagram TV theme and that was funny because it's three in the morning and I was sitting there, it was just sitting on my, uh, my tank and I was kind of talking to this. We needed proof that we left on time. So this was my proof. Here I am in Azusa. I'm at the shell station at this location. I'm um, getting gas. Uh, here's, here's a picture of my fuel receipt. And I looked down and I realized I could see there was like 20 people watching this at three in the morning. Really? And I went, well, I can see, I can see it why aren't you guys asleep? Like, why are you awake <laughs> at three in the morning on Friday morning? You know? So they were checking it out. They wanted to see you. They were checking. I, I have a feeling a few people like they just had their alarm set. I, I don't know. It was terribly complimentary. So <laughs> then, uh, you know, then I, I took off like about out of hell and, uh, I, I, I might've gotten above 65 miles an hour in a few places. Uh, I did have to stop a little more than I wanted to just because of the way the gas worked out. Originally in the 1,000 miles, we have, let me step back. The way I've got my gas tank set up, I usually only have to stop every 200, 220 miles. Well, I was really going through the fuel. So the answer was about 180, I'd go into reserve. So instead of just stopping five times in 1,000 miles like I was hoping I could, I, had to, I ended up having to stop six. Oh. And sometimes the fuel stops just aren't there. You know, you know that if you want to do... 220 miles or 200 miles before you start looking for fuel and then at 180 miles you come across a sign that says no more fuel for 50 miles so oh boy yeah you gotta stop it's like in know. the desert typically yeah yeah well and i so i ended up hopping from azusa to bakersfield and then bakersfield up the 99 to sacramento then from sacramento i went sideways into reno and then from reno i went back to medford and then we both ended in uh, Coos Bay. But the answer was from Reno on, it was 500 miles and we were both on the same road. Hmm. So I just kind of did my very best and hauled butt, but it was, you know, as soon as I got on the five uh, there, uh, just, you know, north of LA, uh, there was a detour. And I had to go like eight miles out of my way. I mean, oh, it was just man. ridiculous. And the detour was slow. And I remember I was behind like all these trailers with like boats. Like they're all ready to get out for the weekend, you know. <laughs> Fourth of July week, they took a, I don't know. Right. But, um, and, you know, you just can't do much about that. And then uh, I had another detour uh, south of Donner's Pass. And that one was even worse because it was road construction. So they were having us drive on the road that they were busy constructing on so and then the same happened up in susanville too where you're in the middle of this town and there's no road to ride on i mean the roads just tore up and trashed and and then uh once i hit reno uh, from then on it's all very mountainous i mean you might as well be riding in big bear yeah it's just extremely mountain road uh, a lot of single lane stuff um it was very treacherous but you know a bit of wind uh there there was one spot there where i got a bit of rain um just for a minute but other than that i kind of froze going over the grapevine and then i froze again going over donner's pass and i just didn't have the heart to pull over and put any you know put my my extra suit on what i ended up wearing was just regular like you know dickie's pants under and a long sleeve shirt under my uh coverall I've got this great coverall. And then from there, I had a jacket on and my uh, vest. So I, I just kind of opened my jacket to let some air in. And then I'd close up my jacket to keep the air out. <laughs> you know, I mean, it wasn't very, it wasn't very sophisticated. It was a little cold and it was a little hot, but I just had to keep going. So I ended up finishing with a time of 16 hours and 20 minutes. That's, thousand miles. That's good, right? 
It was a really good time. Um, Did you win? So I got there, <laughs> and the first, and I find the location, and it's way up in the hills. I mean, it's like you hit Coos Bay and do another Did you thirty win? miles going through Forks, right? <laughs> so then I pull in, and I'm like, "Where's Charlie?" And the guy's like, "Who's Charlie?" I'm like, "F you. Where's you know? Where's Adam? Where's Jeff? Where's Charlie? Did Charlie finish?" And really, the question wasn't. Did I beat Charlie? The question was, did Charlie get here okay? Mm. You always figure no news is good news. I yeah. didn't, you know, get any bad news. But and so th- this guy doesn't know. So I'm like, okay. So I go in another 30, 40 feet. Uh, finally, Adam, who hosts the Oregon Run, which is what we started, which is what we stopped at, uh, the Oregon Run put on by Adam and Jess. Adam comes over and he's like, Bob, nice to meet you. I'm Adam. Uh, blah 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 you know congratulations on doing the race this that and the other and then all of a sudden i see charlie's smiling face pop behind adam <laughs> and charlie's got a pan of food in one hand and his camera in the other and he's, oh, taking so he's pictures been there of, a while huh he had he, so he finished in 12 hours and 16 minutes so the Whoa. answer is he finished three hours four minutes ahead of me wow holy heck i so was he, just what so he had a pee break and he got food and no, you can read all about it. I submitted a great article with uh, Lisa uh, with Chop Cold, so it's going to be coming out soon. But the answer is that man did nothing illegal, uh, nothing. Sorry, I'm not going to say illegal. I'm going to say nothing against the rules or the spirit of the race. It's very simple. <laughs> he had a five-gallon tank on his wonderful. Uh, I think it's an O2. You know, Harley engine. With the uh, long front end. It's got the long front end. It's got the rigid back end with the car tire in back. So he's got five gallons in front. He put another five gallons on the back. He uh, got himself like a gallon of water to sip on. Uh, got himself a, uh, I saw it. It was funny. He had like half a cliff bar he ate in those whole 12 hours. But the answer was he only had to stop twice for fuel and he used a condom catheter. <laughs> Did he seriously? He seriously wow. did and ran it ran it down his left leg. It's like peeing in your wetsuit. Uh, pre- pretty much, <laughs> just peeing out on the road. He said it was great because he'd hit a bump or something and he wouldn't have to hold it. He could just let it go. <laughs> you know, so he just didn't have to stop. Every fuel stop was just a few minutes. But I'll tell you what, uh, he wrote a great article about it. It's going to be released in Cycle Source uh, in his article that he does the chopper charlie article in cycle source magazine and it's his story to tell and holy heck i was so proud of the man i just i just hugged him and said congratulations you really read my book and took everything to heart (laughs) and learned everything that i know and just went above and beyond so So. 13 hours something minutes like how Mm. fast is that compared to 12 hours 12 hours 12 hours so how fast is that compared to other people who've done it? Well, I did the math. See, the, the average is above the legal speed limit at just over 81 miles per hour. Uh, but, you know, that's his business, not my business. Uh, that's a thing. I had to really shake my head. And I think at some point, I don't remember what we were talking about. And he kind of said, well, maybe at this point, Bob, you could learn a few things from me. I'm like, you think? I think I can <laughs> learn a lot from you at this point, you know, because... The answer is the techniques and tricks that I've learned that work for me in 3,000 miles absolutely do not translate to 1,000 mile races. So <laughs> it's a whole new ball game. He's next level. <laughs> he, he really just took it from nothing and, and made it work. And I, I just give him a ton of credit. Uh, you know, and we were doing all this for dollar store prizes. His, his wife had left. <laughs> dollar store dollar prizes. Dollar store prizes. His wife, the very talented Kayla with uh, Inferno Art Studios. Uh, you can find her and her good work on the social medias. So what, uh, did he trumpet you with a kazoo or something mm, when you showed up with the dollar store prizes? It was even prizes? worse. The dollar store prizes that Kayla picked up, because she left a few days before us to get there, <laughs> were pink lays. So there he is with pink lays. And so he goes, well, these are supposed to be for the winter, but I think they're more appropriate So you got this you. ring of flowers around just, your neck. Yeah, and then I That's put like them somewhere, and then he put them back. He put them shame. on my back. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so they're hanging in my room now. I didn't know what else to do with them. You know, I got these pink freaking lays. So It would have been great if you guys got like a sash or something like mm. that or some, some trophy. Well, you can imagine. They're pretty excited, and here's what we're going to do. Curtis will be announcing it soon enough. And you know what? I'm going to wait and I'm going to let Curtis announce it. But the answer is we're moving things around for the Ride One Can a Day. We're going to be doing 
super cool special themes for people on rigids and super cool special themes for people who are racing so that's it so curtis morgan is putting it together uh stay tuned man or okay. stay clicked in because yeah. yeah curtis morgan has a few good things up his sleeve regarding the ride one can a day challenge awesome and it's about to get a lot more exciting so cool the artwork of american roadrunner can be found by the bow monster that's the bow monster on instagram also check out www.bomonster.com the bow monster i was really good man and then i hit the oregon run and here's how that works you <laughs> camp here you wake up in the morning uh, you know you, you enjoy the evening there's a fire and all sorts of normal stuff then you pick up in the morning you ride 200 miles you're at another destination and these aren't i thought they were going to be like campsites well they aren't they're just like people's large property so there's all this craziness going on one place we stopped had like a sauna so you know everyone's in there naked <laughs> and then the pool's outside so everyone's running running between the sauna and the pool naked uh, you know uh, there's just a ton of excitement it's like a nudist colony huh? oh yeah Bunch of hippies mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a hundred and i think they limit it to 160 people on the run man yeah. it was it was great and then the next day and in between i know uh charlie and kayla and i the first day we kind of hopped around and then they took off a day early so the second day curtis morgan ended up kind of dragging me around and just showing me like denver lake and all this i mean i was just i saw so much of oregon it was just above and beyond i'm sure i did you know three four hundred miles every day just exploring so much more of it than running between the campsites and every night it was something different you know there's a different caterer there was uh pig roast the last night that was sunday night cool um you know and i i got to where i was just i had to bring my tent and everything with me of course charlie was smart he just shipped all that he didn't race with any of that <laughs> you know but i had my tent and i would just blow up my mattress and kind of climb in my tent without setting it up and just you know i'd put my suit on as a sleeping bag because it does get a little cold up there in Oregon, but it was a great time. I couldn't imagine an, an, an ever better concept for a run. And again, uh, this is put on by Adam and Jess. Uh, they just came up with this concept several years ago, and I, I think they're going to really be expanding it. And I think they really should because it's really exciting. The concept of just going somewhere else uh, a different night. And you're just kind of camping and you're all running together and that was great because Charlie and I'd be running down the road and, you know, like 50 dinos would pass us just doing 800 miles an hour or something. <laughs> and, oh, that was cool. And then they, people would follow us for a while or then we'd kind of get lost and catch up with people. And, you know, you're running into people in the middle of nowhere. Um, it, it was it was terribly exciting. I couldn't imagine a better idea. So when that was all over, I went uh, inland a bit from Portland uh, stayed with a cousin for a few days uh, so that that was great I got to go into Portland uh, see Powell's books and then uh, one day she had to go to work she works at Edgefield uh, Mc, McMillan's McMillian's McMinimans Edgefield right so this is this large property she's a massage therapist hmm. so for a while I got to hang out on this great property and it's all you know just property of self-care for lack of a better term imagine you know it's just the whole property is a spa so yes cool mcminimums edgefield if you ever get a chance that's a place to hang out and that's just uh next to troutdale uh off 84 there in oregon uh it's terribly exciting and then uh, another day i went i thought well i'm just i'm just gonna hop around and i remember i went to cc's coffee and hung out there for a while and then this biker gang came by and they're like hey you should cruise with us i'm like sweet so i started following hopping them around <laughs> and my biker gang i mean like 10 bikes on ruckuses and 50 cc's and all these little guys just hauling hauling butt and having a good time and i don't think we ever did more than 38 miles an hour <laughs> you know so these guys were just awesome uh and i was following them and then so i went to hop over the burnside bridge and i thought i'm gonna go to powell books again and i enter the bridge on the east side to hop into portland it's on the west side of the bridge and i feel like i have a flat tire and so i'm like well what's going on and the bridge is maybe only a half a mile and i look over and my typewriter and laptop bags dragging on the ground via bungee cord oh. behind my motorcycle and i'm like oh, heck. oh so it landed upside down 
Uh, luckily, my laptop protected my typewriter. <laughs> so the typewriter was okay. The laptop was okay. The case for the laptop that I wrap it in is a little beat up. But I had everything wrapped in bubble wrap as well. So everything's oh, okay. kind of like double wrapped. Uh, the bag did not survive. The worst part was is that I had a few things in the bag and they had fallen out onto the bridge. So mm-hmm. when I got to the other side of the bridge, the other side of the bridge is a homeless shelter <laughs> or a homeless mission, if you will. Mm-hmm. So as soon as I cross the bridge, everyone's yelling and screaming and I can't stop because there's no shoulder on the bridge. So I'm just going real slow. Traffic behind me is going real slow. And everyone starts yelling and screaming. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. So I pass them by, you know, half a block <laughs> and I pull over and stop. Cause I don't need like 50 people huddled around me wondering what's going on. I stop. And of course two people get out of their cars and start yelling at me for littering on the bridge. And, and I agree. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know exactly what I lost. So this is Oregon. So this is Oregon. So they like, want yeah, to find an to... excuse to yell at you. Well, I start looking and I realize I don't think I really lost anything. Right. I can't like see anything that I lost. No, I can see that some bags have been ripped open and the bags so I go back on the bridge. The bags were full of oatmeal and coffee. I still have the bags, <laughs> but the bags are ripped open. So there's oatmeal and coffee all over the, you know, coffee grounds, all over the freaking bridge. I could barely see the coffee grounds. The oatmeals were evident because cars were hitting it and they're poofing all over. You know? <laughs> and it was a lot of oatmeal. I mean, it was ounces. I mean, I really, I really yeah. enjoy oatmeal, and I wasn't sure what the food situation was, so I, I threw a you know a pound of oatmeal in my enough bag oatmeal to make years. a Quaker cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I enjoy. Man, everyone, why is everyone laughing about oatmeal? Oatmeal's good. It's funny. Cheap and easy to make. You can make it cold. You can make it hot. You can put all sorts of stuff in it. I just take beef jerky with me. Mm. Cliff bars. No, that stuff's too expensive. <laughs> of course. I mean, unless you're moving, you know, and hauling butt, then yeah, cliff bars, beef jerky, yeah, that's that's really good stuff. Can't you, like, put, uh, like, steak on the side and like cook it on your way i heard something about the Mm. mongols they would uh you know genghis khan and the mongols from uh ancient history mongolia they would put like uh uh meat under their saddle when they were riding so that when they when they stopped you know after they were raping and pillaging they would have like a cooked steak all ready for them like between their horse and their bottom yeah Yeah, so could you do that with a motorcycle like cook a steak on your ride so there is a contraption (laughs) and i do own one (laughs) <laughs> it's called a hot dog cooker. It was $38 really? once upon a time. And it does hook to your exhaust. And the idea is you put a hot dog in there or a frozen burrito <laughs> and it cooks after so many miles. Yeah, 30, 40 does it miles. Does it taste like exhaust? I would suspect so because <laughs> mine, I, the few times I've tried to use it, oh, I tried to use it on my Goldwing and it hung out too much and I'd, I'd lean over too much and it hit the ground. and So I kind of busted mine up. Uh, I did cook a hot dog in it once. That was fine. But then you got to carry hot dogs around with you. Dude, if they know, could I mean, do that with a Jiffy Pop, you know, the popcorn and the tinfoil like on the stove, if they could do that for a motorcycle, that'd be awesome. Well, you, you probably could. I bet you someone out there had. <laughs> we're going to get a few good replies. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I've done that. Exhaust. <laughs> yeah, I did it on my BMW. <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be great. So... You know, it is what it is. I just so you got a mangled uh, backpack. Now. Oh, I, I looked got, at it. It looks like a line like tore it up. <laughs> oh, it's it's trashed, and I still had to get home with it. So I took all the contents and put it in a bag. No longer is it weatherproof. Uh, everything when I take off for a ride, I kind of cover everything in Scotch Guard. Mm-hmm. And if it really starts raining heavy, I do carry trash bags for yeah. everything. But now, what what brand was the bag? You know what? I just picked it up in L.A. a few weeks ago, and it, it was oversized and fit my typewriter. So it doesn't really have a brand. Oh, I think so I can't give a shout out to a brand no. or something. It looks kind of military issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. got the the bands and stuff on it. I just like that it was really oversized, and a typewriter or a medium sized portable typewriter in its case could actually fit in the bag, and oh. that's why I picked it up. Okay. Yeah, and so my typewriter, I had my typewriter, my laptop, and some food in there, and that's it. I mean, I had my personal belongings in my bag above my tank in front and then i had my tent and everything and my old uh it's an old military bag my dad gave to me years ago uh, but it's what all the servicemen would carry over their shoulders it's a you know a a, a rucksack really Hmm. and that works because i could push the tent in all the way down and then throw my suit on top of that and it seemed to fit pretty well. It'd be about three feet long. Kind of hangs off the back of my back the way I did it. Because I'd taken my passenger seat off my cop shop to fit that on there. And 
just kind of hung everything else off the bags. Yeah, I was I was a little heavy, but it was so nice everywhere I went. You know, like Charlie would say something competitive, and so the next morning I'd wake him up with my typewriter in his ear next to his tent. You know, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, I got to stop at a few good coffee houses or a CC motorcycle shop and just sit there and type out good stories. Uh, stories of what I just done or <clears throat> getting the other stuff that I'm working on together it was uh, very relaxing so I don't know how much more top rattering I will be doing can we say that top rattering is that a new <laughs> term <laughs> top rattering uh, you just made well one. you know when it's on a motorcycle you're not carrying it per se so if it's a heavy top rider it's okay I just imagine you like riding your your motorcycle and you've got the typewriter like between oh, your legs ridiculous. on the gas tank and you're like that's hilarious right writing something mm. <laughs> so then i hung out in hood river for fourth of july and let me tell you about that experience hood river, where's that at so that is east of portland okay i think maybe 60 miles 70 miles uh it's right on that side of hood mountain and hood mountain looks like that big mountain in the middle of disneyland it's just gorgeous and it took me a few days to see it because it was pretty overcast. But I hung out with Curtis Morgan for a few days. And, I mean, we were doing, like, the coolest chopper shit of chopper shit. I know at one point him and I both had our laptops open and we were watching Bob Ross on the TV. <laughs> he was painting for us. And we were, you know, doing cool chopper shit. Uh, he, he had taken a bunch of cool pictures. So we were going through that. And then I was writing an article for Lisa at Chop Colt. And, we, you know, we just had a ton of fun. And people would come into his house and be like what are you guys doing well we're doing cool chopper shit leave us alone so we hopped over the bridge to get or the gorge the bridge that goes over the gorge into washington so fireworks are legal in oregon (laughs) but they're totally legal in washington yeah so here's how but oregon puts on the fireworks display so there we are on the gorge facing south watching the fireworks in oregon and then we're on the north side and we're on this bank uh beach right under a train track so the train would come over and the trains you know 50 feet above you and 40 feet behind you i mean it was just terribly exciting it gets better in washington all the dads compare their dadliness by how many mortars they set off so they're (laughs) setting off these big mortar fireworks so Oregon would set off some fireworks and then 10 feet in front of me, these dads were sitting there just lighting off just these monster mortars equal masculinity. I oh like my it. gosh. <laughs> and we were just best dad ever. Yeah. Do it again. You know, I mean, it was just, it was terribly exciting. And, uh, you put some of those Roman candles on the front of your motorcycle and fire them off. Like. Oh man. Everybody had everything going. I had never seen so much, you know so many fireworks right in front and it was funny to pull up because they've got all these pvc pipes sitting in the sand so naturally you suspect well were they just fishing like are they using these as fishing pole holders that's what they look like no these guys are lighting mortars off and shooting them way up into the air you know so it was uh yeah it was pretty exciting so then uh yeah then i cruised down to sacramento after that hung out with uh my old friend alicia she lived right in downtown Sac, and the problem with that was I parked my motorcycle in the back of her apartment complex in the secured, fenced-in, you know, patio, if you will, mm-hmm. and someone snaked the bag off my tank. Oh, right. snakes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of just took well, the Was bag. she in a bad area? Yeah, you know, it's on, like, Q and 26th. I mean, I, it looks like a real nice area. Yeah. Uh, so needless to say, I woke up the next morning and realized, but you know, there's nothing in this bag. That's a funny thing. They left my tent bag. Hmm. And if you're a homeless person stealing stuff, you figured you want the tent or my saddle rack. Well, we can't assume they're some... homeless. but Well, you, that's you, true. They could have. Well, all they got were my gloves and my goggles. You well, know, Maybe they knew who you were and they knew the value uh, of those. They're going to sell them in a couple eBay. more years on eBay. That's hilarious. And you're like, I've got Bob Marshall's motorcycle gloves. You're like the evil Knievel yeah. cape. You know, right, in another right. 10 years. <laughs> yeah, and my um, my sunflower seeds were in there. Mm. Were they chewed or not chewed? Because, I mean, were, they would be worth unchewed. more if they were chewed. Yeah, that's true. You know, no, these were Bob unch- Marshall chewed there on these seeds. There might have been a few chewed ones that kind of worked them way okay. in there. Okay, those are worth a lot. But mostly unchewed. 
You get some Bob Marshall oh, DNA. Man. There was just nothing. In it. The bad, the only bad part was I did lose. I have a really nice pair of really thick gauntlet gloves that my dad had given me years ago. They're really good leather. They're very expensive. You know, they're goatskin lined and they're just warm as heck. Hmm. And those were in there, and I lost those, and that really sucked. But you know, uh, it is what it is. I, I kind of spent half an hour looking through trash cans because I assume someone stole this, rode a few blocks or walked a few blocks or whatever, opened it and realized there's like nothing of value and tossed it in a trash can. So mm. I kind of searched around the trash can. My friend Alicia too, she felt really bad. So she's helping me look through. She went one way, I went the other and we're looking through trash cans and we didn't find anything. And I kind of put an APB out and, uh, man this this joshua earl mr joshua earl hits me up on instagram going uh, you know what i live like two blocks from that and i'm gonna start searching around so he's been looking for my bag and obviously i'm just kind of interested in my glo- my gloves that my dad gave me but what a good guy what a good guy he's yeah. like oh yeah me and some friends are on it so I hope they're not, you know, rummaging through the homeless camps too much around that area. But I suspect sooner or later he's going to be hitting up some uh, pawn shops and whatnot. But, you know, nothing's really pawnable from the bag. I mean, just those gloves. sunscreen. I, you know, I just wanted my gloves. But they're all worn and beaten to crap. Well, know? if anybody so, has a pair of those gauntlet gloves that they're not using and they want to send them over here, Bob nice. could really use some. <laughs> well, I need the really, really extra large one. That's okay. a hard part. It's extra hard large. stuff. It's hard. It's Bob will sign a copy stuff. of his book and nice. send it to you for the gloves. We'll do a nice little exchange. I Fair offered trade. this guy a few dollars. I'm like, well, if you find it, let me throw you a few dollars for shipping. No way, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Joshua Earl, man. That cool. guy's rocking it on the Instagram. Uh, you know, just, just being a too, true friend about it. So, so the next day, I had to kind of haul butt home. I want to get home Saturday night. But, you know, Berkeley's not very far from Sacramento. And what's in Berkeley, but uh california typewriter and y'all know i'm kind of into typewriter so there's this great typewriter shop called california typewriter so i just kind of <laughs> conveniently hopped 150 miles out of my way after stopping at walmart to pick up some gloves that's all i could find i think i rode 20 miles without gloves and for those of you who don't know the story the answer is the few times my pops and i would hop around in states that had no helmet laws and we just had to ride to dinner or something we'd ride without helmets well, I took off once without my gloves on, and he takes off, stops his bike in front of me, jumps off his bike. I have to stop my bike because now he's blocking me. He goes, where are your gloves? And I'm <laughs> like, my, my, your gloves. Put your gloves on. Dad, I don't have a helmet on. You always wear your gloves. So the helmets were negotiable to my pops, but gloves were not. So you'll never see me riding without gloves. So I had to ride like 20 miles to a Walmart without gloves on my way from Sacramento to Berkeley. But... I found some, they barely fit me, but you know, they work for the ride home. Uh, luckily I had my sunglasses in the house with me so I could wear those, but on the ride home, but my eyes were really mad at me afterwards. And hmm. then as the sun fell, I just put my reading glasses on. So hmm. <clears throat> it got a little exciting, but <laughs> yeah, I hit up Berkeley and got to hang out with those guys for a minute. They're real exciting in the world of top riders. If you're into that kind of dirty <laughs> mechanism, these guys are kind of they even had a movie made after them actually there's actually a movie called california typewriter uh, that's tom, what i was looking at in this postcard yeah he gave me that as a souvenir tom the original, hanks john mayer yeah sam shepherd california typewriter looks mm-hmm. cool looks like a cool movie i'll check it out it was a really good movie yeah, yeah. no I, I really enjoyed it and it goes through the you know what people famous people people who work who need to write a lot uh, movie writers actors songwriters obviously tom hanks man they love their typewriters and if you don't know i enjoy doing first drafts on my typewriters so yeah. i have a few so hey, it's nice to even know. when he's not doing the typewriter his usual font is courier which is a typewriter font so <laughs> that's him on the typewriter like right now <laughs> that's right ah it's good stuff i really enjoy it yeah um yeah, so then I freaking hauled butt home and made it home in time, unlike some people, under my own power, unlike <laughs> some people. Somebody might have had to throw their box in the back of a U-Haul to get home. Oh. Their, main, their names might be Charlie and Kayla. <laughs> Unfortunately, Charlie's back did not make it home. Oh, so, we'll have to read about that. Yes, yes. Well, it was, a, it was a bit of fun to, you know, he posted about it on the gram, and I'm like, and he 
just kind of blew up his electrical system. He's got 200 plus thousand miles on this mm-hmm. poor Harley of his, but I'll tell you what, I give him a lot of credit. Um, and I just told him, look, he, you know, he kind of, you know, we, we are very good friends and we were very fortunate enough to compete in this together. Um, and he was just kind of telling me, you know, Kayla didn't want to hang out and wait for parts and she wanted to get home. So we got this U-Haul and it was kind of a sore point. I said, listen, man, you're very smart. You're still married and I'm not so good for you. I think you did the right thing, you know? So yeah, it definitely is his story and you can, uh, read all about it but uh yeah my uh motorcycle really killed it i was really uh impressed cool. that cool. it kept going i was blowing a bit more oil than i thought i would but i kind of blew through like a gallon and a half of oil damn it was just falling out of everywhere i think after i'd get it going so fast so many rpms it just start spitting out of leaks and <laughs> i didn't know it had it's more oil than a saudi chic it was it was yeah it was a lot of oil every time i stopped to refuel well not every, maybe every other time i'd do it like maybe half a quart yeah you know just enough to kind of keep you on your toes it's really not that probably much. pissed off a lot of people behind you with all that black smoke right there was yeah curtis and his uh <laughs> and his girlfriend olivia she olivia kind of pulled next to me going we can smell you just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that was good too. Yeah, Curtis is getting ready to move to New York. Whoa! Yeah, with his girlfriend Olivia. That's where she lives. So, pretty far. Yeah, they've been dating a good year, and it was wonderful to hang out with her and get to know her. And she just hung out on his back the whole time. I know a few times his back didn't start because his battery was out of whack. So, <laughs> you know, she would uh, Curtis would go off and push his back to get it running, or uh, someone would help him, and I'd get to hang out with her for a few minutes. Of course, my line was something like. Hey, darling, hang out here in this gas station often. Do you need a ride? My bike starts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good fun. That was good fun to, uh, you know, just hang out with new people. Get Sounds to know. fun. Sounds real fun. Yeah. And, and that's always a funny thing, too, because a few people ask me, like, did you bring us any copies of your books? Like, can I buy a copy? And, you know, I just, I rarely travel with copy of my books because they'd probably, you know, find a way to get really beaten up. Yeah. Sometimes I do have some copies, but I did not on this trip. I was trying to be a little light. And honestly, I still carried a bit too much. I brought an extra pair of pants I really didn't need. Uh, I had brought in three shirts. I should have only brought one because everywhere I went, you know, someone Does that make a big difference, though? Me a shirt. Well, <laughs> jeans and a shirt. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't think so. And it's not it, what it is, is what fits in my bag yeah. that I'm comfortable with. The economy of space. Yeah, exactly. If I don't have to like super stuff my bag. And I think that's a trick when you travel on a motorcycle. You really want to leave yourself a lot of extra room because everywhere you go, you're going to get souvenirs. <laughs> uh, you know, for the Oregon run, they were just handing out all sorts of stuff. I got this really cool cup that unfortunately was in my tank bag when it got stolen. Uh, you know, that says the Oregon run on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to have to find a way to score another one of them. Probably not. They're dated. So I'm sure Adam and Jess are probably out of them. But that was cool but scored a few new patches officially got my own ride one can a day patch if y'all remember the story uh the last time i rode the ride one can a day that uh, patch went to my pop so it's sitting over in his old riding vest in the living room there in the pocket i should probably sew it on his vest one of these days but anyways earned my own ride one can a day patch and uh, a few other good things so it was great to curtis morgan was just a wonderful host Adam and Jess with the Oregon run. They were just wonderful people. Uh, actually, Dump Truck joined us the last night. So, <laughs> man, that man and me, we just hung out for hours, man, solving the world's problems. So if you don't know Dump Truck, he's a voice and personality, and I'm probably saying it wrong, but the man does a lot of radio and hosts a lot of cool motorcycle shit and just has this really great attitude and voice, so fuck you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> gravelly. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. He was cool. a great dude, though. We. We had a really good time. He's doing some cool stuff at the upcoming uh, Four Corners Motorcycle Rally. So I think we're, we're going to be hanging out for that. Uh, we got a lot of exciting things in the near future. Uh, you know, summertime is upon us. Uh, I know heading up to the Sierra Stakeout here uh, in a week. Uh, up in, uh, and that's up by Immigrant Gap, which is, uh, yeah, just this side i think of donner's pass still in the state of california but that'll be a nice trek 
And so we'll uh, recap that next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that should be a that should be a lot of fun. It's not, I actually just busted out the big tent. I've just decided it's okay to go big tent. You know, they just don't take up that much more room on the back, and I want a really big tent. Not because I want room to sleep, but it's nice to have room to kind of put all your stuff in if you're right. gonna be somewhere for a Keep few it days. Dry. Keep it all dry. We got real lucky on the Oregon run. It didn't rain once. I mean, the weather was just perfect. It get a little cold at night. And I was hanging out by myself. I kept trying to convince people to crash in my tent with me. And, and of course, Charlie and Kayla are like, well, just you can sneak into our tent, Bob. Like, you'll fit. And, oh, no, I'm okay. I'll just, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sleep out. my. So I just put my suit on, and I was pretty comfortable. i tell you what. I was real proud of my friend Beulah May uh, from Girl on a Moto. She uh, just kind of showed up out of nowhere, just cruised up from here in Southern California all the way up to Oregon. Uh, she had been planning on doing it, had a little engine trouble. So I think she showed up on the second day, but it was great to hang out with her. And she'd met some girlfriends up there and, you know, there was a lot of people on the run. So a lot of new friends to make. And if I forgot to mention you and I had the pleasure of meeting you, please forgive me. It was great to meet you. And everybody just had, you know, a great time. I will tell you the, the funniest one I ever heard. And this, this cracked me up and I wish I could remember the guy's name, but we were hanging out at the fire, and Curtis had done this. <laughs> there were seven of us who did the Ride One Cane a Day to the event. So as soon as I got there, you know, I was up on stage for this awards presentation. <laughs> and uh, we kind of did, he gave everyone bags, and he goes, okay, this is White Elephant. So this guy would open it, and then this other guy would open it. And I remember one guy opened it, and he pulls out the sweater. That's 3X. And mm -hmm. he goes, I already brought a sweater, but cool. And I went, well, okay, then we're trading because I, I think I need that sweater. I'm going to freeze tonight, you know. And uh, so we traded, but I could feel in my bag it felt like there might be a book in there, and sure enough, it was my book. So <laughs> so one of them I got to sign, and the other guy I never caught up with, and I think it was two nights later around the fire, and he just got, you know, the guy had had a few beers in him. He goes, screams across the fire, goes, Hey, Bob Marshall, you fag, you need to sign my book. <laughs> just died laughing. Uh, yeah <laughs> yes i do and he continued on his conversation somewhere else with someone else. oh my gosh i'd never heard anything so freaking <laughs> hilarious you know uh he was a much younger guy so yeah that, that that really made me laugh but that's a cool thing about a party you know you can get away with calling men like me fag and i'll just freaking laugh about <laughs> it that was pretty good it was really good so yes good times everyone should check out powell books if they're in the portland area that is the world's biggest bookstore. I only spent like four hours and like fifty dollars in there, so I did pretty. It was three and a half hours and fifty bucks. I went in there with my cousin, and she was real good at making sure I didn't buy too many books. Cool. Uh, it was definitely worth its weight in gold. And uh, everything else was just beautiful road, man. I just freaking enjoyed the road and hopped around and had a good time. I didn't have to pay for a hotel room once. I stayed with family and friends and just kind of worked it all out. And everyone was happy to see me and visit with me and have a good time. And the back did well. Uh, the only time I had to, like, I had to turn it over was because it had a guide that was made out of a skateboard wheel that goes on the chain. And because the chain's so long, it's nice to have this guide so you don't get so much slap. What'll happen is in that posse between throttle and clutch it's referred to as i refer to it as the posse zone but the friction zone really mm -hmm. um you'll get a bit of slap in the chain because my chain's so long because the ass end of that back is so long so i built a guide for it years ago and uh, originally i used what's called a piece of soapstone that usually goes in the primary of a harley and this piece of soapstone is quite large and it so i wore that down so then i thought well let me try the skateboard wheel that everyone's using well i only got maybe twenty thousand thirty thousand miles out of the skateboard wheel and it disintegrated and i was just sitting there the chain was just sitting there riding on the bearing you know yeah Ouch. so i could hear it i could hear it the last few hundred miles of the race clunking and i knew what it was but i thought i, I think i think it'll make it like i couldn't see any wear on the chain and sure enough it did well because chain metal is pretty freaking hard and luckily yeah. it was harder than the bearing metal on this old skateboard wheel so i ended up having to take that off and 
I'm going to have to get another primary soapstone guide and yeah. you know, put in there off of Harley because that seems to be, I think I got a good forty or 50,000 miles out of that before it wore out. You know, the problem with riding choppers the way that I do is that the consumables go really fast. Mm-hmm. You know, tires, you know, chain guards, chains. Uh, I buy the very best chain that I can. It's called the Subaki. Uh, it ends up being like 160 links and a 530. I did a 530 conversion. Originally, there was what's called a 630 uh, chain, which is just a bigger, fatter chain. And it really weighed too much for how stretched it was. So luckily, I found a 530 conversion. And, you know, for those of you out there, let me try to put it in layman's terms. A 630 chain is is quite wide in its teeth. And the idea behind that is so you can put more torque into it and it'll handle it because when the kz1000 came out you know you're talking 100 horsepower to the rear wheel i mean harley hadn't even done this harley didn't come close for 20 years so they had to kind of invent a bigger chain Mm -hmm. and it's a six thirty hundredths of an inch uh gap between rollers and so these 630 chains originally i kept the 630 and i ended up with like 120 links and it weighed like 30 plus pounds of chain i mean it was just absolutely ridiculous for something that's supposed to be propelling you forward now you're only gonna get it's always about the relation of the power that the engine's putting out to the rear wheel and you only get 30 percent of that if you're lucky you know what the engine's actually putting out to the rear wheel so it all had to do with tensile strength that is how much stress could the chain go under before it exploded so luckily they started making 530 chain that could actually handle the tensile strength. And I think it's something like 11,000 pounds or 9,900 pounds. It's something way up there. So I was able to convert over to a 530. All the numbers are different, uh, but it works out real well. And this chain that I have on there now, it's a Subaki. It's almost $300 worth of chain. But i tell you what, I think it's lasted gosh a good 40 plus thousand miles i mean Mm. just forever and i keep measuring it to see if it's stretching and change the chains don't really stretch they wear out you know the metal doesn't physically stretch the rollers wear out and so you end up with more space but so that's my tech lesson of the day (laughs) i was gonna say we we should we we should really we should call that point bob's wrench or wisdom wiki right there bob's wrench or wisdom wiki yeah Uh, we'll make that a piece for every episode now That'd be you know, good you just give some advice about, you know, some of your experiences yeah. on your KZ 1000, things that people can try if they're in a tight spot. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, it, it turned out real well. I just laid the bike on its side. I took the wheel off and then, or took the guide wheel off and then pulled the rear wheel back. Uh, it worked out. I'll tell you what, man. It's great to get out there and enjoy road, and I love doing this stuff all the time. Wonderful to share about it on this here American Roadrunner podcast. <laughs> yeah, join us next time. We'll probably be uh, doing a recap of the Sierra Stakeout from Immigrant Gap, and we're going to have some really good guests coming oh in the future. Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. And some repeat guests. guests. We we're not going to tell you yet, but nope. stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. Lots of exciting themes. Enjoy. Keep the rubber side down. And stay safe. <laughs>